I want to talk about tournament formats. I know it might sound like a boring topic, but it's important because it affects fighting games differently than other games. It's one of the main reasons why I think we have things like people focusing on mains and things like that so much. So the one I want to start with is the most interesting, most volatile, one that you probably don't even believe that people have actually done. And it's why I have this amazing sick 360p old school footage. This is a single elimination best of one tournament. So what that means is you only play one game. So let's say who's in the stream chat. I'm going to call you out because you just uh, subbed with the prime, right? Aloha snack bar. I play you. We play one game. The loser is out of the whole tournament. That's it. Uh, this is also just called Japan style. The reason why is even though for a long time we used, and when I say we, I mean North America, can't speak for EU really. Uh, when we did the double elimination two out of three, it's a pretty classic format for just gaming in general. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellow gamers. Across the ocean in Japan, they were doing single elimination best of one. The con, let's start with the cons. Of course, you guys want to hear negative stuff, it's YouTube, right? Volatile as fuck on paper volatile because it's a single limb best tool of one because of a certain rule you can't switch characters in between rounds so this is for two reasons one since it's only one game you don't have time to go back and then two just in between games so let's say i beat aloha snack bar and then i have to play someone else who subbed earlier sky blue uh i still have to play the same character the whole time so this means that if you play a low tier character and you run into a bad matchup, I'm not gonna say you're checkmated, but it's not a fun time for you. Honestly, those are the main downsides. There's actually a lot of upsides. I don't think it's a good format for who, determining who's the best player. I think it's a really interesting format that can make you a better player and addresses certain problems that I'll talk about for just tournaments in general. We can talk about the pros. So one, I actually think this format makes you a better player. And you might be like, why? Because this shit is random. The thing is, it just puts you in a spot. You, you have only two options. Either you need to play something like a really well put together strat that you can reliably perform in one game. If you don't have such like a well put together matchup strategy, you have to treat each round like it's a whole game. So you only get one round to adapt rather than one game, which is a pretty important skill. It means that you could adapt very, very, very quickly. Two out of three, you have the luxury of losing a game where in single limb, you only have uh, one game. Since generally the single limb first to one tournaments, you can only pick one character. If you're really committed to a character, then you might be encouraged to find strategies you might not otherwise find when you're like switching characters. We just talked about playing multiple characters a lot in Strive. This is kind of where the push that character to their maximum potential comes from. The tournaments don't take very long. The tournaments don't take very long because it's single limb best of one. So if, as long as the game doesn't take a long time, then you're good. Maybe this is the answer for Dragon Ball. Make Dragon Ball really hype. Single limb best of one. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. <laughs> then lastly, because it's single limb best of one, it opens other formats and makes other formats in the single limb best of one space more viable. Something I wish we had a lot more of is teams. If you play Smash, you, you got teams on deck. Doubles, as they say. Teams, I think, is a really interesting answer to the single limb best of one problem of, hey, you can just get hyper nasty, but also it is a little random. So teams is like a way that you could make single limb best of one, two out of three. And you also solve the problem of if you play a weaker character, what happens if you run into bad matchups? Because you can team up with your friend who is the Grime Lord who plays like a top tier or something. And then you have like a nice balance of, oh, I play an uncommon character that people not, might not know how to fight, but I know that this character has these problems and I got this homie in the back. And then depending on how they do the team's tournaments, most of them, like let's say if it's a 2v2, it would be the first player versus the first player and then second player versus the second player and then the winners play in case uh, it wasn't a 2-0 and then when you have your three versus three it's usually like pokemon style it still is faster than a double limb two out of three but there's different dynamics you get to hype up your boys i think it's really interesting it's really really fun and it, it puts less on the players to only pick the best thing 
because you can't repeat characters in this format. Maybe I slightly changed your mind about single limb. I don't think it should ever be the format, like the main format, but I think as a side, like $1 or free online thing, I think it's really fun. There's a lot of interesting formats here. This is actually from grand finals of like maybe my second team's major. It's not just this, like old Japan nationals are always single limb. They're always single limb, best of one. If you're lucky, it's teams. Like sometimes it really is singles. I can't help but laugh when I say single limb, best of one, because I just think of how I have like Smash friends who would explode. Every time I talked about it with Smash friends, they're always like, what the fuck is that? Like why? So there's one more thing about single limb, best of one tournaments that I find pretty interesting. And it's actually that tier lists can vary depending on the format. Mostly because there's some types of characters that perform better in this more volatile format. I guess Slayer is actually a, a decent example. I can't actually speak for this version of uh, Accent Core. The example I always heard was Third Strike Makoto. It's always the one that I hear where it's like in first to one, she's a god character. But then in like two out of three, it's just it's just hard to win that way. Any type of like super explosive pressure character kind of falls in that. Where like long term, let's say like your zoner who has good mix or like your hyper fast character that has good mix or I don't know, like characters like that. They're good in like both formats. So if you look at older tier lists, sometimes older tier lists, you'll see uh, some slight differences because of this factor, which I find interesting. But do you guys have any questions about that?